Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Best Online Medical Lectures. In the last video, we have discussed about the epidemiology of the dengue fever. Today, we'll discuss the clinical manifestations of the dengue fever. Okay, so what are the clinical features and clinical manifestations? Okay, so this dengue fever is uh, that is the dengue infection can be asymptomatic that is there will be no signs and symptoms in a person who is infected by the dengue virus or it can be symptomatic okay the so symptomatic the spectrum of the disease it could be either an undifferentiated viral fever or a dengue fever or dengue hemorrhagic fever or expanded dengue syndrome that is isolated organopathy okay so this dengue fever can be without hemorrhage or with unusual hemorrhage and this dengue hemorrhagic fever can be due to the uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever with uh, without shock and with shock okay so these are the clinical spectrum of the disease dengue virus disease so there are actually four dengue clinical syndromes that are undifferentiated fever classical dengue fever dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue and dengue shock syndrome okay so this dengue shock syndrome is actually a severe form of the dengue hemorrhagic fever okay so one by one we'll try to discuss this clinical uh, syndrome so before that a, a few words about the pathogenesis of the dengue viral infection so how this viral infection invades the body and uh, how the immune response of to this uh, uh, virus infection takes place in our body so first step one in the pathogenesis of the dengue hemorrhagic fever is or the dengue fever it is step one is homologous antibodies form non-infectious complexes that is consider this as a serotype one a serotype one that is dengue virus one okay in the last video we have discussed that dengue virus are of four types okay so consider a dengue virus type one or serotype one has infected okay so once it is uh, enters the body so body will produce antibodies so as you can see here in the light blue color there are neutralizing antibodies to the dengue fever and here white structure there are non neutralizing antibodies okay and this is a complex found by the neutralizing antibody and the virus that is the dengue one serotype virus will make a complex with the neutralizing antibodies and finally this immune complex and this will get destroyed and the infection subsides after some time but there are non neutralizing antibodies will be there that is in the step 2 heterologous antibodies of the first serotype infection form the infectious complexes with the second serotype that is uh, when in the same person in the same person for the second time if there is a second serotype say dengue virus 2 has entered the body and it combines with the non-neutralizing antibody of the dengue virus 1 okay so when it forms a complex by the non-neutralizing antibody it forms a complex okay the serotype 1 virus forms a complex of with the non-neutralizing antibody of the dengue virus 1 then step 3 that heterologous complexes enter more monocytes where virus replicate that is that complex of dengue virus 2 and non-neutralizing antibody of the dengue virus 1 they enter the monocytes and they multiply okay so this uh, and they help in multiplication of the dengue virus 2 so virus will replicate and finally in the step 4 uh, the infectious infected monocytes release the vasoactive mediators resulting in increased vascular permeability and hemorrhagic manifestation that characterize the dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome so this was the brief pathogenesis of dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome how the clinical manifestation takes place we'll discuss now so the first clinical syndrome is undifferentiated fever okay so the person suffering from the dengue virus so it's a primary dengue infection it will develop as a simple fever okay the patients will have a simple fever which is indistinguishable by the other viral infection and there can be a maculopapular or rubelliform rashes on the face neck and chest which will accompany the fever okay so this is a diagram of the maculopapular rashes on the chest and the upper extremities so 
then next clinical syndrome is the dengue fever okay so as we have discussed in the spectrum of the disease so dengue fever can be asymptomatic or symptomatic symptomatic can be first it could be just an undifferentiated fever for two to three days and will subside then classical dengue fever so older children adolescents and adults they will suffer from this classical dengue fever so what happens in this classical dengue fever is there is acute sudden sharp rise in temperature it is acute fever for 39 degree and 40 degree celsius for five to seven days okay and this fever is a typically biphasic fever okay typically biphasic fever with severe headache okay with severe headache myalgia arthralgia and bone pains that's why this uh, uh, dengue fever is also known as break bone fever which is particularly seen in adults and the rashes can be seen that flush faint retro orbital pain and eye movements on eye movements and eye pressure photophobia there is altered taste sensation anorexia sore throat and leukopenia that is wbcs are uh, decreased and typically there is thrombocytopenia that is the platelet count is decreased and occasionally there is hemorrhage such as gastrointestinal bleeding or hyper menorrhea or massive epistaxis that is bleeding from the nose okay so these are the clinical manifestations like high fever headache muscle or joint pain pain behind the eyes that is the retro orbital pain skin rashes maculopapular rashes okay then sometimes vomiting or bleeding in the later stages of declassical dengue fever due to the thrombocytopenia is seen okay so again here also you can see the clinical manifestation it can present as the uh, fever with headache muscle and joint pains severe abdominal pain or persistent vomiting or sometimes difficulty in breathing or diarrhea so this all are the clinical features of classical dengue fever okay then another syndrome which is actually the complication of this dengue virus is majority of the people will be having only the this classical signs and symptoms of dengue fever and it will subside by its own or just a paracetamol can be useful okay if it is not controlled then we have seen in the pathogenesis when it will invade and especially by the second serotype then it will lead to dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome so children less than 15 years of age in a hyper endemic areas in association with repeated dengue infection that is the secondary dengue infection so the incidence of dengue hemorrhagic fever in adults is nowadays it is also increasing okay so rarely dengue hemorrhagic fever may occur in a, as a primary infection so majority of the time this dengue hemorrhagic fever is as a complication of the secondary infection by another serotype of the dengue virus okay so signs and symptoms are similar to the dengue fever but in addition some hemorrhagic manifestations are seen like pale islands in the red eye there are the spots okay we will show the picture of that then most important thing is positive tourniquet test so a tourniquet when applied it is the bp apparatus tourniquet when it is applied and the pressure is when the pressure is raised midway between the systolic and diastolic blood pressure then a typical petechial hemorrhages are seen in an area of one square inch okay so around uh, 20 such petechias will be seen this is one of the diagnostic uh, a sign of the dengue hemorrhagic fever then it is together lab diagnosis with thrombocytopenia and rising hematocrit concentration is seen before the subsidence of the fever and onset of shock okay so we can see this the signs and symptoms of the dengue hemorrhagic fever except conjunctival hemorrhage maculopapular rash petechial hemorrhages okay after tourniquet test and this pale islands in the red sea typically explained as white areas in a red sea okay then this all are these hemorrhagic signs then this is impression sign impression sign you can see okay when this uh, two fingers are pressed you can see the pale thing huh? the here the diaphragm of a stethoscope so when it is remained so this is an impression so these are the signs of the dengue hemorrhagic fever now further complication or the next clinical syndrome is the dengue shock syndrome that is the 
there is hypovolemic shock due to plasma leakage so we have this seen in the pathogenesis of the dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome they due to the immune response there is increased vascular permeability and the fluid uh, leaks from the circulation and there is a hypovolemic shock and due to that there is a plural fluid leak that is plural effusion ascites that is accumulation of the fluid in the lungs uh, pleura or ascites in the abdomen then hypothermia cold clammy skin interclinal bleeding fulminant hepatic failure and optimal fluid management is an important to avoid the overhydration also okay so this is the complication so it is very short duration for 12 to 24 hours so patient is conscious till this stage 4 of the shock here usually systolic blood pressure falls late but the pulse pressure deteriorates much earlier that is the pulse pressure that is difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure typically in this stage is less than 20 millimeter of mercury so if it is prolonged the shock causes the metabolic acidosis and multi-organ failure okay so this is the who classification of the spectrum of the dengue fever so dengue fever dengue hemorrhagic fever stay grade 1 2 3 and 4 so this grade 3 and 4 are nothing but the dengue shock syndrome so as we remember the dengue manifestation could be asymptomatic symptomatic can be dengue fever dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome so let us briefly revise so dengue fever typically signs and symptoms are headache retroorbital pain that is pain just behind the eyes myalgia arthralgia that is the bone pain rash hemorrhagic manifestation there is no evidence of the plasma leakage in the dengue fever okay it will be just having this signs and symptoms and laboratory diagnosis wbc there is leukopenia is seen thrombocytopenia is but there is no evidence of the plasma leak but in the dengue hemorrhagic fever in the grade one there is evidence of the plasma leakage and the thrombocytopenia it is typically platelet count will fall less than one lakh and in grade Two, grade 1 plus spontaneous bleeding is seen and this grade 3 and 4 this 1 or plus then there is a weak pulse that is the shock features are seen this is the WHO classification and grading of the clinical manifestations of the dengue disease or dengue viral infection okay so these are all about the clinical manifestations so just to revise uh, so this uh, nowadays instead of classification between dengue fever or dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome the dengue disease is, uh, fever is classified is uh, based on three phases febrile phase then critical phase and recovery phase so in febrile phase just to revise what are all we see there is sudden onset of the fever headache there is uh, can be mouth and nose bleeding muscle and joint pain vomiting rash diarrhea then in the critical phase we see the hypotension pleural effusion ascites that is the uh, bleeding or the shock syndrome phase gastrointestinal bleeding and finally the recovery phase we see the altered level of consciousness seizures itching and slow heart rate okay so this diagram shows the various changes uh, during the clinical course of this dengue fever so here on the x-axis these are the number of days okay days of illness one two three four up to ten days so first parameter is temperature so typically there is a biphasic fever okay so fever comes in phases biphasic fever then uh, potential clinical issue that is dehydration so that is up to first three days due to the high fever dehydration is seen but shock or bleeding typically from the three to sixth day okay then there is a reabsorption or the uh, due to the fluid overload can be also be seen due to the uh, administration of more fluid then hematocrit changes so the this is the platelet so typically platelets are reduced from three to six days and hematocrit hematocrit because there is a plasma leakage so around 20 percent of hematocrit that is the pack cell volume is increased in this phase from three to six days and uh, this one is serology and virology so viremia that is the virus in the blood first up to three days then this igm and igg antibodies gradually it increases after the seventh day okay that is from the recovery phase so starting first four to five days you will not be able to see this antibodies okay so this is the clinical manifestations and the parameters in the during the course of the illness so in the next video we'll discuss about the uh, 
laboratory diagnosis and the treatment so finally one word about the expanded expanded dengue syndrome so if the dengue shock uh, that is one of the complication after the dengue shock syndrome it will lead to severe organ involvement such as liver kidneys brain or heart and there is evidence of plasma leakage so maybe it will associated with the co-infections comorbidities or a complicated complications of prolonged shock okay so in the next video we'll try to see the laboratory diagnosis and treatment of dengue fever thank you